Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel So Little Time and my name is Karen. Today's vlog is going to be a pattern review all about the Jennifer Lauren handmade Ivy Pinafore dress. So if you'd like to hear how I got on with making up this garment, please stay tuned. <laughs> dress by Jennifer Lauren Handmade and this is for my first blog post for Felicity Fabrics. That is now live on their website so I'll pop that link in the description box below for you if you want to check out the full review and then at the end of this video I'll insert the photos that I actually took for the blog. So the Ivy Pinafore actually has two style options to choose from so I'll show you the front of the pattern envelope and you can see here that we've got a full swing style dress it's very free in the waist area and then a more fitted A-line style which is more your classic pinafore style dress, and that is the option that I decided to go for. It's a fully lined dress, so I was really pleased to be able to go onto the Felicity Fabrics website and choose two fabrics for my project. For my outer fabric, I have chosen this lovely cornflower blue fine baby needle cord with these lovely glittery stars all over it, and they really do sparkle quite nicely in the sunshine. Mm -hmm. And for my lining fabric, I chose some navy lining with white polka dots all over it, and you'll see at the end of this video what that looks like. It really does contrast quite nice with this outer colour, and I'm really pleased with that. On the back of the pattern envelope, you'll see that we have the line drawings for the two different style options, the supplies list, which tells you what you need to make each of the dresses, the fabric suggestions and then your body measurements chart just here. There is a pattern instruction book included obviously and inside you have the finished garment measurements charts for each of the style options and a very clear step-by-step -step guide on how to make the dresses and then some lovely clear illustrations as well so I did find that really really helpful. So I actually used the finished garment measurements in the packet to decipher which size I was going to make. So I initially decided to cut out the size 8 and I made a very basic 12 and what I mean by that is that I just basically cut out the front and back pieces of the dress and sewed them together and just literally tried them on for fit and I thought that the size 8 was the right size for me. What I didn't do was include this yoke section that you can see here across the top and that was my first mistake. So I went ahead and cut out my official fabric in the size 8 thinking that would fit absolutely fine and just followed the step-by-step -step instructions to make the garment. I did find um, that because this fabric is very, very soft and buttery to the touch that I, it was quite a fiddle to do some of the construction of the garment. So if I just pan you down slightly, you'll see that there is a seam line running down the front and you're actually supposed to sew this as a flat fell seam. And that is actually quite a fiddle with this soft fabric. So I wasn't really pleased with how that turned out, especially after I top stitched it. It just looked quite messy. And then when you actually attach these yoke sections, you sew some gathering stitches across the bottom of each of the front and the back yoke pieces and then gather the fabric slightly to fit the top of the dress. And that is what I found changed the size of the dress for me. So I went ahead and had sewn near enough the whole garment up to the point that all I needed to do was actually sew the hem and put either buttons or snaps on this, on the strap area. And so I went to try it on and I just found it was really, really tight across my bust area and under the arm side. And I hadn't even got a top on underneath and I thought, goodness, that is going to be really tight if I wear it with a top. And it really just didn't look very nice. You could see that it was too small for me. And I was really gutted because I'd near enough finished the dress. I wasn't overly happy with how I'd finished the dress because I did struggle with fitting the yoke section on the front and the back and I just didn't think it looked very neat. And I am quite particular about how the finish is on my dresses. I don't want them to look handmade. And especially as I was doing this for the Felicity Fabrics blog and my first blog at that, that I really wanted it to be perfect. Um, in the instruction booklet, it does obviously show you the pattern layout that you're supposed to put your pattern pieces on the fabric, depending on what width fabric you have. And to be honest, I never usually use that. I usually find my own way where I can make the most of the fabric. So that is what I did. Now, bearing in mind 
this fabric does have a nap, so I had to make sure that all the pattern pieces were on the correct way so that the nap was all running in the same direction. So I did still manage to utilize my fabric really well. Luckily, um, I was able to recut another dress out of both the lining and the outer fabric. Um, so I was <laughs> really, really pleased because I was really worried that I was going to have to contact Caroline and Fliss and say, I need more fabric. Um, yeah, so luckily I didn't have to do that and I managed to sort the pattern pieces out to be able to cut the dress out again in the size 10. And I'm really pleased that I did manage to do that because the size 10 fits me just right. It is a little bit more roomy in the dress section itself, but I'm absolutely fine with that. It actually is very, very comfortable. So because I'd had a few issues with sewing up the dress on my first attempt, where I found the flat fell seam quite a fiddle and also inserting the yoke section quite a fiddle, um, it actually gave me a lot more experience on my second go. So I actually decided not to do the flat fell seam down the front of the dress. Now you don't put one on the back seam because there is a slight curve in the pattern piece so it fits to your body really well. So you just do that as a standard seam. You just finish the edges of the fabric first on your overlocker and then just sew with your 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. So I decided to use the Tilly and the Buttons Cleo Pinafore Dress pattern instructions uh, for how to do a faux flat fell seam and that worked really, really well. So I'll just come in a little bit closer so you can see. It has just made it really, really flat and it just made it look a lot better than how I had originally sewn it. So I'm really pleased that I did that and then like I say, the back is just sewn as a normal seam. So for the yoke section, I actually made sure that I took my time and I pulled the gathering stitches just the right amount to fit across the top of the dress. What I also found was missing on the pattern pieces for the yoke was actually a little notch for the centre at the bottom so you could line it up with the centre seam. So I made sure that I put a little snip in there just so I could line that up correctly so I knew that I could gather this side and gather that side and it would fit really nicely and I did that for both the front and the back. Now because I'd obviously cut out a size 8 initially in all my fabric and then cut out the size 10, what I did find was that I actually didn't have quite enough fabric to cut the back yoke out on the fold. So I did have to cut two pattern pieces and then put a seam down the middle. Um, so I just moved that pattern piece over slightly by um, 1.5 centimetres just so I had that seam allowance there to put those together. And then again, I did the same, put that little snip in so it lined up with the seam line down the back and then gathered those little gathering stitches evenly and it just went in a lot more smoothly so I was really really pleased with that. And you do actually have to top stitch around the top and that really made it sit a lot flatter. I do think I gave myself a little bit more of a challenge with this particular dress because of my fabric choice. I absolutely love this fabric, it's really really gorgeous and I do think the dress has finished, been finished really well and I'm really happy with how it's turned out but it is quite lightweight for this pattern. Now the pattern does suggest that you use sort of more of a medium weight fabric so I think maybe a cord would have been better or even a canvas or a denim and that would have been a lot easier to sew from start to finish. And I did find that the lining fabric was very, very fluid in its movement and that was quite tricky to cut out and sew as well. So what I did on my second go was to actually spray the fabric with spray starch and that really does help for cutting out and for sewing. So I would definitely use that in the future with any you know, fabrics that just seem to have a life of their own. I'm really, really happy with how the dress turned out in the end, especially as it took me two weeks to actually get this sewn up from sewing basically two versions. What I will do is grab the first version just so you can see what I mean. So the first version then, you can see here, I've not even put the snaps on, but there's my front yoke and I had quite a lot of issue with a bit of excess fabric that I'd got there and it just kind of gathered a little bit whilst I'd sewed it. I mean, these are very small little bits, but I just really wanted it to be perfect and I just really wasn't happy with that. And then on the back, this is more noticeable for sure, um, where my centre seam is, it just goes off the centre and starts veering that way, if you can see, where my yoke is not quite right. So the centre of that yoke, I would say, should be there. And my seam line is just been pulled sort of 
going off that way slightly. I found the lining a real fiddle with this one because I hadn't used spray starch. Um, what I had done though on this version initially was I'd interfaced one of the yoke sections um, so the straps are a lot firmer on this one because then I ran out of interfacing and I haven't interfaced any of this dress whatsoever. It hasn't affected the fit of it or how it feels, although you know it doesn't feel as structured at the top, um, but that's fine. I think it looks fine. Um, yeah, so I just needed to hem this one. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this dress yet. I don't know if I'm going to unpick it and try again and then maybe give it to somebody else or I'll just cut the fabric up to use for something else. It might be part of like a patchwork quilt or something. So whilst making up this dress, because it took me the two weeks, it wasn't a thoroughly enjoyable sew as per normal, um, but we all have times when things don't go to plan. So, you know, that's life. And I did learn a lot from this make. It hasn't put me off making it again. I will definitely make another version, but I will definitely use a more, heavier weight fabric, so something like a denim or a canvas. Um, so also as well, because this fabric is quite lightweight, I didn't want to use buttons or buttonholes, and I didn't want to make a mess with the buttonholes, so I've actually used some snaps. And my friend came to the rescue with those, who my friend who lives down the road, luckily, because I knew ordering at this stage in our life, <laughs> um, it wasn't gonna be here on time for me to get it over you know, get the dress finished, ready for the blog post. So I went to visit my friend and she luckily had some snaps in her stash that just, I think, suit this fabric really well. So these style, you can see that the fabric pokes through and I think that really goes nicely. I have actually tried this dress on without wearing a top underneath it and it looks really nice. Um, and this particular pinnacle style dress is slightly different from one that others that I have made because of this yoke section, but not just because of that, but because it actually has bust darts, as you can see here, and they sit just in the right place for me. And that really gives it a nice close fitting fit across the top. So when you wear it without a top on, it doesn't show any of your bra, which I find really nice. Um, and because it's lined, you know, it doesn't stick to your legs or anything like that. So I can wear this in the winter and autumn months with tights. So that would be really nice. I would definitely say that this pattern is for an advanced beginner or an intermediate sewer because of the gathering of the yoke section and also because it's a fully lined pinnacle style dress. It's not as straightforward as you would first think. And I had seen some lovely versions of this on Instagram. And so I have been meaning to make this for quite a while. I'm really pleased that I have now made it. Um, and I will, like I say, make it again for sure. So what I'll do now then is just stand back a little bit for you so you can see the dress and the shape. It's a lovely A-line shape. It is very, very flattering, especially with these bust darts, like I say. Um, but you will see better sort of details of the dress in the photos that I'm going to insert in a moment just because I, that was taken in the daylight hours um, this morning and it just looks, um, you know, a lot clearer. Okay, so you can see it's very A-line here. Um, and the length just comes above my knee. I actually have bias bound my hem um, because I did want to just keep the length that it was at and it just adds that little bit of stability like I've said before. So you can see that the fit is really nice. There's a lot of room in there. So really, really comfortable. And there's the back. So it does dip in slightly at the back, which is nice because of that curve. And then if I can just come in, you might be able to see the yoke at the back. And you can see that I actually have that seam line in there where I had to cut it as two separate pattern pieces, but I don't really mind that. Um, yes, the yoke now fits really nicely. If I can move my hair out of the way. Um, and then you'll see that I've used these lovely little snaps and I've put two on there just to keep them in place. Um, yeah, and I really, really do like this lovely coloured fabric and it goes really well with my Agnes top. And um, this fabric is also from Felicity Fabrics, and they are getting some more in stock if you've been after this and haven't been able to. So I'll now insert the photos for you so you can have a better look at the dress and I'll see you in a moment. <laughs>
So I really hope you like my dress. Um, and yes, it was a bit of a challenge to sew, but in the end, I think it was worth it. I'm really happy with the finished garment and I'm really, really excited to be able to wear it now throughout the rest of the summer. So that was all for today then. I hope you enjoyed this review and have found it useful if you are going to ever make this dress. Please do like this video if you've enjoyed the content and consider subscribing if you've not already subscribed to my channel. That would mean the world to me. So thank you very much for watching today and I shall see you again soon. Bye.